Welcome to our Tech Explainer video. Today, we're tackling a question that many ASP.NET Core developers encounter. Our viewer is looking for an alternative way to get the absolute path in ASP.NET Core, specifically instead of using server.map path. The viewer mentions trying to use iHosting environment, but unfortunately, it returned null for both content root path and web root path. They need to access an image file named sample.png located in the www root folder. Let's dive into how we can solve this issue effectively. Welcome back to another technical video. Today, we'll be going through your questions, answering them, and hopefully finding that solution you need. Guys, remember to stay just a little bit crazy, just like me, and hopefully you'll find that solution you're looking for. Now, let's continue on to the video. To get the absolute path in ASP.NET Core, we need to use the iHost environment interface. This is the modern alternative to server.map path. First, inject the iHost environment into your controller or service. This allows you to access the content root and web root paths. Now to get the absolute path of a file in the WW root folder, you can combine the web root path with the file name. Finally, ensure that the file exists at the specified path. You can use the file.exists method to check this. Let's now look at a user-suggested answer. To get the absolute path in ASP.NET Core, you can use the ifileprovider.getfileinfo method instead of server.map path. This method allows you to retrieve the physical path of a file. First, you need to register iFile provider in your configure services method. You can create a composite provider that combines different file providers. This setup allows for flexibility in file sourcing without breaking your code. You can also create a custom iFile provider if needed for specific logic. Let's now look at another user-suggested answer. To get the absolute path in ASP.NET Core, you can use the Web Application Builder's environment property. This is particularly useful in startup or program routines. And that's it, guys. I hope we found the solution you're looking for. And look, if we did, please hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And until the next time you need technical help, I hope you have a good one.